Hi there, I'm Professor Juris, and I wanted to make you a video today and go over some basic camera functions on a 35mm camera. The camera I'm going to be using today is a Leica R3, and this is a fantastic starting camera, and you can get these for a really good price now, um, much cheaper than when they were new. So if you need a good film camera, this is one to, to actually look at. So there's two things in exposing a, a negative that you need to think about. You need to think about the camera's f-stop and you think you need to think about the camera's shutter speed. So we're going to look at the f-stop first. I'm going to remove the lens from the camera. So when I remove the lens from the camera and I scroll through the f-stops, if you look at the aperture opening, it gets really big and really small. Now the really small opening will have a really large number, um, like 16. 22 and the really wide open opening will have a smaller number like 2.8 1.8 depending upon the lens that you're using this particular lens right now it's it's wide open right now and it's a 3.5 um, all the way down it's f22 now this is really important and something that automatic cameras leaves out it, it's actually setting on one of these when you're taking a picture one of these apertures or f-stops it's actually choosing one but it's choosing it for you Using your camera on manual exposure and actually setting to the f-stop that you want will give you a different choice in every photograph that you take. Um, I use this constantly um, for controlling my depth of field. And depth of field is something that is about the focus that's contained within a photograph. So when we're talking about how much depth of field does a photograph have, it's talking about how much is actually in focus from the foreground to the background and trying to get everything in focus. And by understanding your f-stops, you can actually control the focus that's contained within a photograph. Um, and these are also, so these are used to control depth of field, but they're also used to control how much light strikes the film. So when the lens is really small, there's very little amount of light going to strike the film. When the lens is open all the way, a lot of light is going to strike the film. When we think about exposing a negative, what I like to tell students is think of a negative as a glass. If you think of a negative as actually a glass and you're going to fill up this glass with light, um, you want to fill it right to the top every time. If you overfill it, if I had like a whole pitcher of water and I poured this on this single glass, um, it's going to make a big mess. That's the same thing happens to exposure, whether it's in digital, whether it's in film. If I only fill it up halfway and you were at an expensive restaurant and they, they only gave you like this much, you'd be, hey, you know, let's fill it up. So it's the same things with your camera, whether it's digital or film, you want to make sure your exposure is perfect. So you want to fill it exactly to the top with light. And again, one of the ways that we do that is by the shutter. Um, or by the f-stop or the aperture that's in the lens. So if it's wide open, it's going to fill up quickly. If it's closed down, it's going to fill up small. Now let's take a look at um, the shutter speed on the camera. Now, when first looking, if you're um, just learning about cameras, you see a bunch of numbers on the two dials on the top of this camera. The one on this side is actually your shutter speed dial. Uh, and that controls your different shutter speeds. And over here we have a series of um, numbers that correspond to the film speed, and that's usually dictated by ASA or ISO. ASA stands for American Standards Association. ISO stands for International Standards Association. And they're the people that set the actual speed or say how sensitive the film is to light. Um, it'd be comparable to setting the, um, the thing on your digital camera. So when I open up the camera here, um, open up the back, I pull the, I've usually, and most cameras open this way, I will pull up the rewind knob. Now if yours doesn't want to pull up, there may be a little release on the side here that you have to push in order for it to get it to come up. And then when you pull it up, it's going to pop the back open. And then once you've popped the back open, you can see the shutter in the back of the camera. And this is a focal plane shutter and it goes from side to side when I shoot it. So um, this actually controls how much light is going to hit the film. Um, going through the camera's aperture. So we have the aperture, um, the f-stop in the front of the camera, okay, where light is going to come through. And then we consider this like a door. So the door is going to open up. And the longer the door is open, the more light can pour through. And it can go through very fast. This is um, one one thousandth of a second right here. Did you see that even open? The curtain right here? Watch the curtain. So 
what that's saying is I've taken a second and I've divided that second into a thousand parts and that's how fast that's opening and closing one one thousandth of a second now going all the way to the other extreme if I go down to one second watch this at one second so that shutters um, actually opening for one full second and staying open and so all these numbers that are in between are actually fractions like that was a four it says four on the dial but it's actually what that means is that's one quarter of a second so I've taken a second divided it into four parts and one part is how fast that's going to open and close so it's the combination of the f-stop the aperture um, f-stop and aperture are the same thing um, and the shutter speed and this curtain opening this is the shutter so the curtain opening and how much light is going to strike the film back there so now that I've gotten to this part a lot of students will say so with all these options where do I actually shoot my pictures at well I think a good place to start is a 60th of a second and a 60th of a second on most cameras is a magic number and this particular camera it's not designated in any certain way it's the same as all the other numbers but it is actually the slowest shutter speed that you can hand hold your camera at if you start to hand hold your camera below a 60th of a second like a 30th of a second a 15th of a second what you're going to get is a little bit of camera vibration or camera movement that can actually show up in the negative from the curtain the shutter opening and closing the vibration so you want to be on a tripod if you're shooting below a 60th of a second but I tell students a good place to start when you're going out and taking pictures is set your camera at a 60th of a second and then um, choose the correct f-stop by the camera's light meter to give you the right exposure. Now, if you have a camera, an older camera, say granddad gave you a camera and the light meter's broken, maybe you open up the battery compartment and the batteries were all leaking and it messed up the light meter, you can get an app now for, um, it's one of the apps that I use is called My Light Meter um, and put on any smartphone and it's a really accurate um, exposure meter to give you an exposure for a 35 millimeter camera. I would make sure that you get the one that's an incident reading not a reflected reading and what an incident reading is is it'll show you a little white dome on top of the light meter and you want that one and you want to actually point that toward the subject or I mean toward the camera so you'd be at the subject pointing it toward the camera and that way it's measuring how much light is actually falling onto the subject and I have other videos about exposure you can watch but that's just the basic brief so anytime that you shoot pictures you could shoot the, the shutter speeds that's above a 60th of a second, 125, 250, 500, 1,000, and hand hold with no problem. When you go below a 60th of a second, you want to make sure that you have the camera on the tripod. And then as far as the, the light meter goes, all light meters are different in all cameras, so you need to really read your owner's manual to see what type of light meter that you have. Some cameras, like a Pentax K1000, has a little floating line on the inside when the line's directly in the center that means it's the correct exposure other cameras have red lights red light mean or lights that flash on and off red light would mean don't take the picture green light would mean take the picture um, and things like that so make sure that you read your camera's owner's manual and that'll give you the setup for exposure anyway hope that helps and um, I'll make another video here on putting the film in the camera thank you I just wanted to talk about a few more concepts on the camera that you should be aware of. One of them is the camera synchronization speed. Now on this particular camera, um, the synchronization speed is an X that's all alone down here on the shutter speed dial. So when we set this to the X, that means that I have the correct exposure if I want to put electronic flash on top of the camera. Now some cameras may have a thunderbolt some may have um, not a thunderbolt or not an X, but they may have the 60th of a second may be colored like orange. And that would mean that that's the number that you have to set the camera on. Now, any of the shutter speeds that are below the point where your camera is synced, you can go ahead and take pictures there. So if it was if the, the 60th of a second was orange, for example, on your camera, then you could shoot on a 15th, you could shoot on a 30th, any of the shutter speeds below there. But what happens if you shoot on the shutter speeds above there, um, the, the shutter actually is just partially open when the flash would go off so you would end up with little skinny pictures and that would just depend on how fast you had the shutter speed um, set to depends on how much exposure you would actually get on the on the camera now a couple other things to look at on the camera this little button right here is actually a um, self timer and the way that you would use the, the way that the self timer works on this particular camera is you 
at once the camera is cocked and everything, I just push this little button here and you'll see the self timer knob start to, to move. And if I actually open up the back of the camera, you'll see the picture take when the shutter opens. There you go. Um, other things that are on this particular camera is a depth of field preview button. You can see it's really humid outside. My lens is um, fogged up. Uh, the depth of field preview button is a little button right here. And what that actually does is when your camera, your camera has something called automatic stop down. And what automatic stop down is, is your lens is always wide open. So even if you have the lens set to like f22, when you're outside looking at it and looking at things to take pictures of, the camera's at the widest aperture. So it might be at like 1.8, 2.8. It's always wide open until you take the picture. When you take the picture, it automatically stops down to the f-stop that you're set on, and then it opens right back up. So what the depth of field preview button does is say I'm focused on something in the foreground and I want to make sure I have enough depth of field in the background. I can press the depth of field preview button in and close my lens down completely or start to stop it down and I can actually visualize. I have to squint my eyes a little bit, but I can actually visualize things coming into focus um, as the, the lens is stopped down as I change the um, f-stop. So that's the depth of field preview button. Uh, other things on the side of the camera, for example, there's two little things here to put a PC cord. Um, the X is for um, the synchronization if you're using a strobe light. So that's the, the one you primarily need to worry about. And if you would just pull this little um, plug out of there, you can actually plug a PC cord into there. Other ways you can do it is there's a hot shoe on the top of the camera. Um, and again, and see it's marked with an X for synchronization. So what a hot shoe is, these came around in the 70s. And therefore, actually, you could slide a flash onto here without a PC cord. Uh, again, the PC cord would go into the X mark over here, but if you had a flash that's the, most of the newer flashes don't need PC or PC cords no more, you could slide it right on there. Um, a set of st studio strobe lights would plug into this camera on the X. Um, if you have a camera that doesn't have a PC outlet, what you can do is you can get a hot shoe to PC connector that slides on the top of this camera and then a PC cord will actually go into that and um, will allow you to sync your camera. So I think that's um, pretty much about it as far as the use of the 35mm camera. Um, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.